Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, I am putting together a class on how to play keys in a worship context. Um, so before I before I dive into the detail on that, I want to give a little bit of background on who I am, uh, my experience playing keys, and then I'll talk a little bit about what the what the class is going to contain, um, and then just some thoughts on on learning, you know, how to actually learn all this stuff. Um, so as a little background, I I started growing up playing classical piano. Uh, and I remember in junior high, I started playing worship music, you know, for the for the worship team in our junior high band. And I was playing on a on a um, a mini grand piano. And this woman would come over, she'd drop off all of the uh, set lists throughout the week, and then I'd practice just playing through those chords. And that's what I would do uh, in junior high. Then I moved on to high school, and I remember playing lots of uh, pad and piano. And that was like the first kind of step that I had. But the message to me in high school was. You know, don't overcomplicate it. Stay really, really simple. And this is all that you're supposed to do, which was really frustrating for me because I really wanted to, you know, express my creativity, really take bigger steps in my journey as a keys player, but I just wasn't allowed to. Then I went to college and that was when I sort of uh, stepped into the, the realm of main stage and using software and all of that more often. Um, so that was the first step. And then I started learning acoustic guitar, started singing, became a worship leader. Uh, and then beyond that, I, uh, when I graduated college, I became a worship leader for a church of about 100 people, maybe 150 people on a good Sunday. Learned electric guitar, built pedal boards, you know, it just went through that whole realm. And during that time, so up to this point, I'd never played along with tracks. And at that point, we had a, we had a team that I had a really difficult time uh, with scheduling week to week. And so I started making my own tracks. And so in doing that, I'd, I'd set up the set list, and then I'd track all the electric parts, track all the keys parts, track all the acoustic parts. Um, and I would go through that process myself, and it really taught me a lot about being a producer, right? Being the producer of a band in a live scenario. And then beyond that, we, we moved to a different town, uh, got plugged into my wife's uh, family's church. And that church has maybe a thousand people uh, in a service, you know, maybe one to two thousand people on a Sunday. So a totally different context. And in that context, there were no tracks. So I went from, you know, junior high playing the baby grand piano, moving on to now as an adult, using a Nord, using software. I, I built an Ableton rig for my church. Um, using all of that to really get to the point where the piano, the keys player is like the producer of the band. So we're playing uh, pads, pianos, you know, synths, organs. We'll, we'll talk about all that. But getting to the point where I'm using all of that, and if you look back on my YouTube channel, you can see a few of the live streams where you can see exactly what the keys are doing. And in all of that, there's never a track. We do not use tracks at our church. So it's really incumbent on the keys player to listen to what's going on in the room, listen to what's going on in the band, and fill in all the gaps that might exist. Um, but I remember growing up, that process for me to learn all that was so difficult. Um, I had to spend hours upon hours upon hours just researching things, figuring out how synthesis worked. Um, you know, a lot of trial and error. There were a lot of times that I came up with an idea that I was going to do, and it just did not work at all. And uh, I, man, if I could go back in time and have someone just sit down with me and say, okay, here's a piano and here's some effects. Here's what you can do to maximize your dynamic impact throughout the worship set. Okay, now here's a pad, right? Okay, now here's a synth. And that's essentially what I want to do for this class. I, I find that a lot of the resources that are available to keys players these days are um, buy this patch and use it on this song. But, but I want to do something that maybe... Um, teaches you how to fish, right? The old, the old adage, teach a man to fish and, and he'll never go hungry, whatever the phrase is. Um, the goal, I think, is not to teach you how to play This Is Amazing Grace correctly. I think my goal is to teach you how to play any song correctly for any arrangement. Um, so, you know, the, the question kind of becomes, who is this class for? If you're a keys player who is just killing it week to week, then this class is not for you, right? And if you're at a church that is all tracks and there's never room for you to do anything beyond piano and a tiny amount of pad, this probably is not for you either. But I know from having been in a small church or being in a big church, who's on the team matters, right? Depending on the electric guitar player I'm playing with, I'm going to be doing a lot of different things as a keys player. So if you're, if you're in a context where there's room for you to do more and you just don't know how to do it, I think this would be the perfect class for you. And that, that's what I'm, I'm aiming it at. Um, and keys is not, it's not 
my day job. You know, I have I have a real job that I spend time on. This is just for fun on the side, and and it's a, a thing that I'm passionate about on the side. So the class is not um, it's not going to be like perfectly put out lessons. The the production value is not going to be perfect, right? It, but my hope is that. The, the class will be as though you are sitting in the room with me asking the question, how do I use a synth to have the biggest impact in the church? How does, how does synthesis work? You know, um, My goal is that it feels like you're just sitting in the room with me and I'm just walking through how all this stuff works. But there is something to remember about keys. The, I think the problem with keys is um, there used to be songs back in the day where it was really simple and if you played piano, you could fill the part that keys is supposed to fill. Those days are behind us. What happens now, and I know this because I've, I've written songs, I've gone through the production process, you layer electric guitar parts, you, you layer uh, synth parts, you layer piano parts. So as a keys player live, you suddenly need to do so much more than just play piano just to get the song to translate well and to feel full in the room. Um, and so I, I really want to step through uh, all of the various things that we have to consider as key players and really equip you how to do that. One of the problems with keys is that the barrier to entry is so high. The requirement has been lifted. So now you have to do keys and pianos and pads, all this stuff. And so for a guy who just knows how to play piano, the barrier to entry is so, so high to get involved and to really figure out what's going on. Um, that's where I think this resource could help. But but the reality is you will never figure out keys until you just spend a ton of time sitting down and figuring it all out. The purpose of this class is to help you do that a little bit quicker, right? So there's there's no there's there's no getting around the fact that to figure out keys, you just need to sit down with a plug-in, sit down with a piano, mess with the different effects, play along to songs, find presets that you like and incorporate them to what you're doing. It's it's just the process that's required and you have to do it. My goal is to equip you so that you can do that more efficiently than you would have if you had not taken this class. I think that's that's probably the goal of the class. Um, yeah, so the class is going to be, um, we'll start with just piano. We'll talk about uh, reverb, compression, delay, uh, octave pianos, how you can use those to impact the dynamic of the service. Then we'll talk about pads, drones, how to do the same thing. Um, when we talk about that, we'll do like an intro to synthesis so you can understand envelopes and LFOs and how all that works. Then we'll move on to organs, just a few pro tips on, on how to use organs. Um, then we'll move on to synths. Uh, that'll be a little more in depth, but the, the overall concept would be, you know, how do you find the sounds that you like and, and sort of implement them in your live rig uh, and figure out how to use them. And then beyond that, we'll talk about some aux patches like uh, dulcimers or strings or choirs or stuff like that. And then, and then beyond that, we'll talk about uh, pulling all those things together you know, how to like have those things kind of ebb and flow throughout the set. And then we'll talk about some pro tips on how to play well with the band. So if the electric guitar goes up the neck, you know, what should the keys player doing? If the, when the bass guitar comes in, how does that influence what we're doing? You know, how we're playing, um, subdivisions are, are, if, is there a lot of subdivisions going on elsewhere in the team? If there is, then, then you're probably fine. If not, that might be something that the keys can jump in and do. Um, so we'll, we'll talk a lot about that and then I'll have kind of a, a couple of bonus episodes. I think one, uh, one will be MD. So some tips for doing musical directing for the band. Oh, the other one will be a couple of pro tips on, on like uh, gear recommendations. So obviously in Nord's great, it's like $5,000. So if you only had X dollars to spend, what would I get? Uh, how would I set that rig up? You know, we'll, we'll talk through some of that. So anyways, if you're interested, I'll, I'll put a link down below. Uh, so this is sort of the first episode. I'll put it on YouTube for free. Um, but if you're interested, links down below. Go ahead and do it. I'd, I'd really appreciate the support. Uh, and I hope that it's a blessing to you. I really hope that it... Uh, I know that at our church, it makes a really big difference when a solid keys player is playing. It, it changes... Anybody on our team will tell you that the quality of the keys players comes up. Man, everybody is just getting better across the board. And so that's my hope is that... As we elevate the quality of the keys playing uh, in your churches, wherever it is that you're playing, um, that it would elevate the entire worship experience and that God would be glorified. So that's the goal. I hope it's a blessing to you. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, let me know. I'm happy to help. And yeah, if not, I'll see you in the lesson. Talk soon.